So I came here as a canary, so you guys are the heroes. That's what, that's what we're all about, is and the opportunity to interact. And I, I put down at the bottom there, really, I honor and thanks to you all for who you are. Uh, the, you know, to those who plant their feet and take a stand, I, I dabbled in your website there, and it, because it takes a special being to not just listen, <laughs> but then to take action, to realize what you're truly committed to, and to align your actions to make things happen in the community. And I, I do, I, I, I am totally honored and thankful that I was asked to come this evening. Hey, um, so I'm sensitive. I'm a retired, go ahead to the next one. I'm retired to the, uh, from the Palm Beach County school system. I was their first district grant writer. I was their safe schools coordinator, um, uh, research project manager, and I invented the, the um, algorithms to identify at-risk kids. So I've always had like this sort of wide spectrum mind, you know? And what I see is that, and, and you can take this little thing, wide spectrum mind, and all of a sudden, and um, I would start being in some of the buildings, loved my work, loved it. And then I couldn't talk. I'd go to lunch in a particular school, and a kid would come up to me and talk to me. I could hear every word he said. I couldn't understand him. Now, I, I was uh, part of a, a, a you know, quantum mind brain conference, you know, an educator who really looked at both sides of the brain, how do we do things, and I'm going, whoa, something's really interesting here. But I saw that it was in that room. It was when I went to the post office, and then in, in different places and different times. I, I noticed things are happening. It kind of freaked me out because there, I also would get extraordinarily reactive. If pushed a certain way, I would literally start screaming. I've never screamed at anything in my life except maybe on a roller coaster. And, I, and then I, I went again, I said, whoa, something is happening with my brain with my nervous system, and what could that be? That is far enough away, just wow. as your friend. But you're much closer to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something else to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> but, but power is, and that's again, who you are, are discerning people. You are people who observe, who realize, who think, who reflect. And so that's what I did. I, I was probably five years at least away from retirement. I took an early retirement, and I started hitting the. I started hitting research. I was a research project manager. I set up a, a data field for myself every 15 minutes. I put down, I put down the conditions, my what I was feeling, and then what was around me, and started figuring it out. Of course, the the the, the crowning glory was the day my husband had changed over to Uverse. And, and, and I, could notice, I noticed my symptoms not doing so well. And then I went into the closet to get an envelope in his office and opened up in the door and I said, I don't know what it is, but whatever that is, it's part of it, you know? And so I found out that, that I was sensitive. Uh, I, took, I took some neurological drugs for about a decade. That's what the doctor told me to do and I did it. And what I see, is you, whenever you absorb um, all of these kids that take um, uh, drugs for ADHD, yeah. any drug that you take that gets absorbed and affects your brain, even though it may be the best and most wonderful and even life-saving drug that there is, it increases the permeability because it opens up places to go through. And guess what Wi-Fi does? Guess what electromagnetic radiation does, radio frequency, um, um, magnetic, um, uh, radio frequency, microwave radiation puts little teeny tiny 
openings so that the, something called albumin leaks out into the rest of your brain. And so it's just, that's just a fact. They know that. And they use it as a way to um, uh, deliver drugs. But that's so why I'm particularly concerned, is I know for two years, besides feeling wacko, besides being told that I should take every, any drug in the world that you can think of, um, I know that those kids that are 14, that are 15, that don't happen to be a professional research project manager, you know, and their parents who dearly care for them and want to help them with whatever is going on with them. I, I want to raise awareness so that those kids and those people don't have to go through the grueling trying to figure out what's going on. And that's actually in Massachusetts, and one of the things in your, in your last page there, one of the things that might be possible, for example, is in, whoops, I, uh, instead of a moratorium considered, in Massachusetts they have seven laws in the being considered by their state legislature right now. And one of them is mandatory, uh, mandatory education for, um, uh, for um, physicians. physicians. Yeah. So let's go. Okay, now, let me put my timer on so that you can... Yeah, tell me my five minutes and ten. Okay, what I'm going to do, look across this page here first, and, and uh, really Sherry shared this. These three things. What is it? You know, when you've got that, oh, one back. When you've got that squiggly line up there on the upper left, you've got it going like that. What is that? It's, a, it's, an, it's an EKG, yeah, it's, it's a heartbeat. Heart heart yeah. yeah. What happens? What happens when you flatline? You're dead. You're dead. dead. Okay. Okay. That's what. That's what. That's to see. You either you got it or you don't. Right. So if your electromagnetic fields are messed up to the point where they don't do well, then you really don't do very well at all. How about if you've got an EEG and the thing just doesn't have any activity on it? No brain waves. No, no brain waves. Call that brain dead. Okay. That's how serious this stuff is. It is serious, but so, and, and I like to look at the lighter side. I actually <laughs> changed, I, I added joy to my name legally because I thought, I went, oh, God, this is, what is going on? So let's go, next one. And what happens is we entrain the cells in your body and train with each other. That's how they can communicate so well. But what if you have noise that disturbs that communication? Next one, what you have is a foundation. This one I want you to indelibly put into your brain. Nature, the building biologists over in Germany, great people, uh, all about environmental, environmentally healthy buildings for people. They've measured nature, and nature is less than one. It's 0 0.00001, what's called microwatts per meter squared. So that's a, I like to use that measure because I just say nature is one. Okay, nature is one. Guess what <laughs> the FCC <laughs> microwatts per meter squared, and you can't tell, uh, uh, <laughs> what the, the limit it, or, or the guideline for human exposure. It can go up to this level. Give me a guess for a number. Nature is one. Uh, 1,500. 1,500. Do I have, do I have, <laughs> what else? Shall we go 1,500? Okay, next slide. No, it is 10 million what? microwatts per meter squared. Now, how in the heck did they get that number? Oh my gosh. Remember, the, the FCC defines that as being in compliant, and therefore, whenever any manufacturer or any government person is saying it is safe, they are saying it is less than 10 million microwatts per meter squared exposure. 
Okay, here's how they figured it out. In 1996, they looked around, they saw a 1975 study that took little rats and trained them to go across a cage and push a pedal and get food, and then they food deprived them, basically starved them, and they would put the microwaves into the, um, the radio frequency microwaves up to a certain level, and could the, could the little rat make it across and get food? When the little rat finally couldn't make it across and get food, and what they noted is that the body temperature actually had come up one degree, one degree centigrade. They said, oh, that's it, that's it, that's it. Over that, it's not safe. Okay, below that, it is in compliance. The word safe is not in there anywhere, but we use it, people use it, and then assume that it's safe. That is one of the most important slides in the whole thing because that gives you the context of what is, what are they actually talking about when they say safe. Um, <laughs> dun, 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 1996, uh, they made it into, in, into law that bio, biological effects, anything about health is discounted. It is not acceptable as any kind of legal argument for the placement of any of these. Mm -hmm. I back up one. You know, it is great. I am glad that the FCC should protect its citizens from, from getting uh, cooked. I, did. I am. That's a good idea. The man on top that got, you know, the little play around, he, he was not protected. Shirley, what did you say about the last part that you had down there about health, that we can't say? You cannot. Uh, um, 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 use the word Stephanie and I... We went up to the Public Service Commission when smart meters came out, and we presented materials and all, and every one of us that happened to uh, uh, give testimony on health, basically, they said, well, you know, thank you for doing the writing that you did, but we can't accept that. That is, that's a non-acceptable for any, any kind of vision. You can't use it as a basis. We had forty decision. Forty or forty. We had two binders with about forty-six peer-reviewed studies in them. So heavy it took two people to carry them, and we gave them to the PSC, and they wouldn't accept them, and they left them on the floor. So, and we asked that they be sent to the health department, and we got no response. So, so the health department is those are people who speak about health, but just know that the, the charter for the FCC is to, for economic development. It is for making innovation and having us be the fastest, bestest innovators there are in the world and getting money for it. Okay, but I don't know if anyone's going to be alive. The second thing about this... That's true. Don't say that too quietly. <laughs> the, I, the FCC regulations also say one device at a time, okay? Now, in 1996, maybe you only had one device on your residential block, you know, but now that is not real life. The public assumption of safety doesn't understand that if each one of these was a wireless device, as far as the FCC is concerned, it can be 10 million for this, and 10 million for this, and 10 million for this, and 10 million for this. They do not take into account the fact that you are a human being exposed to all of those things, period. Shirley, um, in 1996, Innovative Households had one computer that was directly linked, hardwired, hard basically, into either the phone system or through their cable provider, hardwired. So, I mean, look at how far that we've come yeah. over, the, over that, you know, period of time, over the last, you know, 20 years, 21 years. I it's, should go back and look because that's, a, that's good to know at 1996 you know, was, was... You know, I mean, that was the year, basically, yeah. where the family might have had one <laughs> Packard computer or one IBM computer or one Apple computer. Everybody shared and it. And then just, yes. the, you know, blossom of the wireless. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of proliferation. Homes, they may have ten devices going at once. 
You're not safe in your new car either. Right, no, exactly, yeah. with the smart no, cars. Important. Yeah, that's really the public, yes. the smart cars. Yes, well, yeah. I'd like to just mention that you have that radio frequency with a radio, with your TV, with your microwave, besides your phone and your computer. So it's not just, we're not just talking about a device, mm -hmm. we're talking about many. Now you're talking about the total exposure. So the proliferation, mm -hmm. next to number three, and on top of it, okay, did remember heat, uh, one device at a time, and the third thing is it's okay to average both time and intensity. I'll show you some graphs that you'll see. There's absolutely no problem whatsoever if a device, say this wireless device called Cookies, um, was going over the 10 million as long as it averaged out, if it had this one big giant spike and then for six minutes didn't have any other spikes or had only spikes that would average it below that 10 million, it would still be okay. It would fit the bill as far as being covered by our these uh, protective processes that we uh, supposedly have. Okay, and uh, in, in 2013, they finally said, how about human exposure? Um, uh, we're gonna do a notice of inquiry, everyone. You can submit testimonies. Um, well, people did up to, there's 20,000 pages. I talked to the guy's name's Ed Mantiply. Uh, who was gathering it. 20,000 pages worth of testimony was handed in and then his staff was cut and the, uh, the FCC chair had no priority to process those. They had not been processed. There have not been any comments. The only thing that has happened since then is that this thing called a, a pinea, pinea, the outside of your ear has been reclassified to be called an extremity. <laughs> an extremity, what they have for extremities is you can have higher um, exposures here because it's not next to the real vital organ part of your body. Well, they have now defined this as an extremity so that when you put your, uh, when you put your, your hearing aid in, they can now be wireless and send little things back and forth. So that's the only thing that's changed. Okay, now I <coughs> so those and let's look at let's look at reality. Oh, this is this is averaging and we'll go to the next one. These are three real things. This is done with an uh, NFA 1000 data logger meter. Uh, it's it's measuring um, uh, radio frequency fields. Remember, the precautionary principle echoes nature. In other words, you want things down to be as close to one. Everything you can do, it, 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 little increments. You know, if I turned off my, if I had a smartphone and I kept it with me all the time, if I turned it off, even for three hours a day, it would be three hours less. I have bills up. Now look at this. This is a uh, this is my great niece's bedroom as she sits cross-legged on her bed with her laptop in her lap next to her nice young gonads. Yes, and uh, and and it goes up to nine thousand. Each of those spikes pr represents another another piece of equipment that she was doing, and that's what's on her lap. Next, this is reality. That's why one device at a time is absolutely ludicrous, ludicrous. Here is a smart meter. Every, um, in this one, was this one, this one was pretty slow. Every minute it spiked over 20,000. And there it is. And so it's, you know, there, there's no problem with this because, oh, it only went up to 30,000 a couple times. Okay. Remember, Just... nature is one. Nature is one. Next one. This, if there's anything I can, if, if, if there's just one thing I can um, cause, as, as you go into the holiday season and buy things for your kids, etc., back and forth, 
This is an Alexa. It was, that's one of those little things that you talk to and it talks back to you. Every six seconds, it sends out a beacon signal, just to make sure it can do things real quick. It, every six seconds, it goes up to about 10,000. And then when you talk to it, it goes up to 20 and 30,000. So this thing is sitting on my great niece's countertop next to her stove. She's been trying for three years to get pregnant, hasn't been able to. I told her, actually I, I, I told her, please turn the thing off and don't use it until we talk again. Well, two months later she did get pregnant. So that was after three years. I have no idea if it's specifically this, but what they're seeing is that the oxidative stress just absolutely makes the hormones messed up. And, and it's, it's a cellular base. Remember, again, nature is less than 1%. Okay, we're going to fly through. Next. Ah. You know what? Leave in it. Can you put on the other, um, can you guys turn around the back of this sheet? This is the next thing, because we're just going to have some fun. And there is, is on, on the, the... Is it on the presentation? It's not on the presentation, it's, okay. it's on the sheet. You can this see one? that. Because I can summarize with this, and that's... If you... Yeah. Yeah, I can't... Uh, can't get it? No, it's not, okay. It's not on the slide. Okay. Who do we have for singers? What I've done is written the Hallelujah Wireless Safety Chorus for <laughs> who knows children, teenagers, the community. This one was particularly for the teenagers up in Sebastian River High School, and so it's a little bit different. And it's um, demand. I say a proper talk. Let safety first inform our lot, because biology is barred from FCC regulations. Enough, our screen time sleep impaired, memory bust, exams despaired. Precautionary rules aren't so bad, hallelujah. Now together, all we, we have, have to do is read, read the fine print. print. All we, we have, have to do is answer the, the question, question, are our children's, children's teenagers safe? Our faith was strong. We all assumed that we were safe and couldn't be doomed when really just cooking our bodies and tissues and brains is prevented. Human exposure is not discussed since 96. It's the same old stuff. Despite being showered with human untested devices. Chorus. All, All we have to do is read the fine print. All we have to do is answer the question. Are our children safe? Evidence shows brain gliomas grow, hormones fry, melatonin goes. A pregnant mommy, her baby sighs, how could you? Attention deficits multiply. Allergies, headaches, fatigue, irritated eye, oh my! If only we would look at what we're doing. Like tobacco, DDT, and asbestos. Civilization sometimes makes silly mistakes. And there's a few more verses. But this, <laughs> this every single one of those lines is research-based. I have, I have the references for all of them, multiple for some of them. If you ever want to share that with the, uh, it's actually, it's on <coughs> YouTube, and uh, I got some um, performers to do that. I think to me, that's the summary. It goes, so I, I go over into in, to the things we've already talked about. The one slide I'd like you to show, it's the third from the last because it just sets this the springboard for um, with the blue there. Yeah. That one of them. Okay. Look at <coughs> 5G is not a homog 
homogeneous grouping. 5G, if you look at that, uh, the gigahertz ranges, there's at least 12 different ranges of what they're saying 5G is. And if you look up at the top there, updated standards that define capacities beyond those defined in the current 4G standards are under consideration, mm -hmm. yet they're allowing the deployment uh, on every single utility pole in the United States without you being, you having any, you, your civic organizations or your municipalities have any redress whatsoever. That's where, that's where Stephanie's going to tell us what the, what the, what's happening in the legal field and how it is that we can make a difference. And as far as I know, we have the first teacher in the state of Florida who's teaching a lesson at Sebastian High School on radio frequency radiation. Yes. Yes. And I want to remind you all, I always tell people, you can still opt out of smart meters. So here's some information on smart meters. And feel free to take one. I'll pass it around. For about $85 and then $13 a month extortion fee is, is what I pay. <laughs> and it's worth it. I practice what I do. Yeah, if you want to use your technology, um, yeah. they have to stand up and face um, one of the most serious technological issues of our lifetime affecting our health and our way of life. And I hope that each of you go out to your family and friends in the next year and tell them about the dangers of 5G, the fifth generation wireless network. Um, it was sold to the public as providing ultra high speed internet, uh, the internet. And you want that, right? Everybody wants high speed. You want to download uh, your video in two seconds. Well, you're going to get that pretty soon. Um, it was announced by the FCC back in 2016, and they rushed to do this. And you can go on to the next um, slide. We went over that next. I'm not going to say next, but um, you, can, you can move it down. 5G um, will support the autonomous automobiles that you're all hearing about. It will uh, support the Fart Smart uh, Cities Initiative and the uh, Internet of Things. And you'll be hearing a lot about the Internet of Things in the next few years. It's where everything in your home, millions of chips are coming in, uh, in new products and they will be connected to the internet. So um, as FCC uh, chairman, former FCC chairman, uh, Tom, next slide please, um, Tom Wheeler says, if something can be connected, it will be connected. And to me, that sounds very nefarious. But um, millions of small cells will be deployed, next slide, in our neighborhoods, in the public right of way, and as my good friend Mary Lynn Martin from Sarasota says, you'll come home from work one day and you'll see a small cell, or a small cell tower I call them, on, your, on the street um, light post, maybe in front of your home in the public right of way. Um, next slide, please. Okay, this is just one configuration, kind of a shoebox shaped apparatus uh, on a utility pole. There will be any number of, um, of configurations. Uh, they're not really telling you yet. It's kind of proprietary information at this point. Some of them will be flute-shaped, kind of a champagne glass flute-shaped, about this tall, kind of a grayish looking thing. Um, there will be some that will just be great big boxes weighing a couple hundred pounds. And I was reading online about how municipalities are becoming alarmed that um, those metal street lights that you see out on the, the freeway or on uh, major roadways, they're meant to break away when a car hits them. And we don't know if you hit one of those poles, will it fall, you know, 200 pounds of, uh, of a 5G transmitter falling on your windshield. We don't really know um, how that's going to work out for us, but um, Not well. also <laughs> if you live in rural areas, like say you're in central Florida uh, and you're maybe a mile from the next house, that cell could possibly go on your house, could go right on the side of your house, or they may build a structure that will be on the public right of way. So, um, next slide, please. As we know, uh, it, it uh, expands the data capacity and gives you ultra fast downloads. You can download that cartoon in two seconds. Uh, deployment will be infrastructure intensive. Um, it is best suited for densely populated areas. 
And they're still working out a lot of the kinks, but um, the small cells will be placed on street lights, utility poles, uh, almost anything they can get their hands on. It might yes. be billboards and signs. Uh, it is estimated that a small cell will be necessary every four to eight homes. Now, I'm saying estimated because I watched another lecture today by um, one of our colleagues, Kevin Modis, and he's up there lobbying on our behalf right now. He's saying every two to ten homes. So it really depends on um, it really depends on the topography. If you're in a densely wooded area, uh, this uh, technology does not travel very fast. So you know, like I said, they're still working out the kinks. Next slide. But they're deploying it anyway. They're deploying it anyway. Yes, they're deploying it before. It's like we said, the cart before the horse. Yeah. Um, so another thing that I found out from the Florida uh, League of Cities um, uh, website is that 120-foot monopole cell towers will also be used. Now, we already have those around town, and I, I passed one on the way here. It was made into a flagpole. We have two. I live on the Barrier Island, and there are two near me. There's one on right smack next to St. Edward's School, which upsets me every time I drive by that. I've also seen them made into crosses in front of churches, and they make them into trees, and I don't know, it just uh, kind of gets me in the heart when I drive by those. Another thing you're going to be seeing is, um, the, uh, is the refrigerator side power supply boxes at ground level. And in my estimation, these should be labeled. These should be labeled. You know, do you want your child playing next to that thing that's transmitting? Do you want uh, your school bus stop mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. uh, traditional cell towers, uh, people have asked me, will the cell towers go away then? If we all have a cell tower in our front yard, well, will the traditional cell towers go away? No, they're gonna be, they're gonna remain. So here's what is concerning to me. It's another layer of radio frequency radiation. Right now, in my neighborhood, it's a neighborhood hotspot. It's a, it's a Comcast, Comcastic hotspot. And so we have that layer, and then we have the smart water meters, then we have the uh, smart meters. I don't have a smart meter on my home, but my neighbors do. Uh, some places around Vero Beach or in Melbourne, I know they have a lot of gas meters, so that's like three or four layers. Well, now we're going to get millimeter wave uh, transmissions in our neighborhood. This is microwave radiation that we have right now. But now they're introducing millimeter wave transmissions. So next slide. This is that fun little power supply box uh, disguised like a as a yeah. mailbox. So some of them will be bigger. Not Sometimes they used to be. <laughs> <laughs> Not what it used to be. But do you want your child, your grandchildren, playing around mm -hmm. this thing? Do you want them leaning against it at the bus stop? I don't. I don't think so. so next slide, please. And I wonder, is this an experiment? I mean, that's what it appears to be to me. Millimeter wave technology has never been used widely in, in the general population. And it has been tested by the military. You can look up, it's called the active denial system, where they were testing uh, millimeter waves on crowd control, where they could turn it up and heat, you've heard of it, uh, heat people up and disperse crowds. Well, I don't think they're going to be doing that. In a, I don't want you to worry about that, but just the fact that they're going to roll it out, and like Kevin Mona says, they are just going to roll it out and see what happens. Next slide, please. So, it all began way back in 1996, when we talked about that, the Telecom Act. This is really how it all began, and it was sort of commandeered by a handful of insiders, and lobbyists, executives, Comcast, Qualcomm, AT&T, all the usual suspects. <laughs> the bill was written by wireless industry insiders. They, they took care of the whole thing. Section 704, like we talked about before, uh, prevents the states from setting standards based on health and safety. And this still supports the 5G deployment uh, situation. So now we have, again, on 5G, local authority is overruled. They just uh, steamrolled over us. Next slide, please. So the legislation, 5G, really began with, with two bills, um, federal bills. The Mobile Now Act, which was sponsored by Senator John Thien. It's a bipartisan issue, Senator John Thien, and co-sponsored by Bill Nelson. 
The Digit Act was um, uh, brought to us by uh, Senator Deb Nelson and Senator Cory Booker. And this, the, the Digit Act will kickstart the Internet of Things. Next slide. There are currently 58, that's 5 8 bills that will um, be coming down the pike at us to clear the way for uh, deployment in historic, rural, tribal, and sensitive areas. And really... And um, national parks. And national parks, yes, absolutely. Um, these bills leave no segment of business or the economy untouched by 5G expansion. It's not just um, the sensitive properties. It's just, every, they've covered themselves. It's every contingency, every, every effort. If you'd like to look, I'll leave this. This up here if you'd like to we check do out. have a, a pass out paper on that too if you want to talk to your congressman. I, we you have a, there. Yes. a handout on it. Excellent. Oh. So if you want to write your congressman or whatever, um, yeah, it's the mm -hmm. is there. Thank you for doing that. Okay, um, next slide. The, um, the 5G bill, uh, bills were and right now, they're, they're pending in almost every state, and except with two exceptions. California! California! Yay! Yay. 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 That was Jerry a big Brown. deal. Veto. That was a big deal. I love Jerry Brown mm -hmm. um, on that one, definitely. And also in Ohio, the 80 cities are suing based on the fact that the 5G legislation was kind of slipped into an unrelated legislation. So they kind of snuck that in, and then they found out what it really, uh, what it really was. It was a dog licensing bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's a dog licensing bill. Next slide, please. So, the Florida reaction. Well, well, well. I found by accident that, um, really, uh, WPTV, West Palm Beach, reported that 400 Florida cities, I think they mean the cities and counties, because I, I don't know, I just... I just think that sounds better, but um, objected to the deployment based on a property rights and home rule issue. They wanted a seat at the table is what they said on WPTV. And you can see that that video is on YouTube. Um, dozens of groups across the state and across the nation spoke out against this. And recently I was a, a signee on a letter that was sent to every, uh, every member of Congress, and there was about 60 uh, groups on that list. Next slide. Excuse me. You said the YouTube video is that called the Florida Reaction? Well, no. I think it's just if you don't go under WPTV 5G, I can send it to you if you need me your information. Yeah, I will. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can send you the link on that. There's a, a, a lot of good information on YouTube right now. Lectures from the um, uh, medical world and from uh, various activists and, and advocates um, on this issue. But there are some other, uh, there's, uh, there are, there's some bad information too. So stick with the, you'll know, you'll know when you see it, so stick with the good stuff. But um, in Florida, in spite of all opposition, the Advanced Wireless Infrastructure Deployment Act was passed and signed by Governor Scott this last June. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> so, I mean, 400 cities to and speak out against this, to me that's shocking that they would not even give it a second thought. But, um, there are some carve-outs allowed. I, I don't know how the villages did it, but there's going to be no 5G in the villages. But don't worry, they'll be back, I'm sure. At the, some utility executive will be after the villages to install the 5G. Um, another thing that I thought was very interesting that I just kind of also found out by accident is that private streets and gated communities will be able to negotiate placement. Well, I think we should all be able to negotiate placement if we're going to force this on us. But, um, and I did verify that with Tim McGarry, the city planner, the lead city planner for the city of Vero Beach, and I also confirmed that with um, the Sarasota County Commission. So, now what's happening is that cellar, uh, cell tower siting rules are being changed in every Florida city and county to accommodate the rollout of 5G. And I'm happy to say I talked to Chris Dazowski, and they did vote on a postponement, which um, is a six-month postponement that should be ending in about two months. And the same with Vero Beach. They had a moratorium so they could study the situation, and that ends in February. But all around the state, there are still moratoriums, but some of, the, some of these are ending now, and they're, 
They are changing their signing rules to accommodate because they've been preempted by the state and the federal government. So, another thing that I, I found to be shocking was that the Florida Public Service Commission is removed from oversight. And where you go, okay, let's say your a junior's drone hits the, the small cell in the public right away, and where do you go to complain? Or a car hits the pole, or, you know, it's just, a, a, there's a lot of unknowns right now, but um, there, it was the Regulatory Reform Act of 2011 that removed the FD, uh, uh, Florida Public Service Commission from regulatory duty on that. They will be checking out the certification. I guess they do have some sort of uh, jurisdiction over certification. And I think that means they want to make sure you're in compliance. Gotta <laughs> check that out. Right. Those Next slide. Okay, the Federal Communication Commission. They are the regulating body, as you know. I guess if you hit the poll, you have to call the FCC. Um, but if you if you go on a search and you look up captured a FCC captured agency, a wonderful paper pops up. It's a Harvard uh, paper. Oh, Harvard uh, Ethics Ethics Eth Institute. Ethics Harvard. Institute. And uh, it, it just shows how they influence the wireless industry. Um, the FCC is exempt from all health and environmental review. They employ no medically qualified personnel. And they ignore the World Health Organization classification for radio frequency radiation. And frankly, we all know there's enough um, study now, enough peer-reviewed study. There, on, on the bioinitiative.org site, you can see somewhere around 2,000 studies proving harm from uh, microwave radiation, radio frequency radiation. So the FCC, I think we mentioned this earlier, they have not updated their safety guidelines in nearly 20 years. It's criminal. It's criminal. It's they're... not like electronics has changed in 20 years. Right. <laughs> not at all. I mean, who had a cell phone 20 years ago? Maybe a couple of us. Maybe a couple of us. But um, the FCC really only protects us from the uh, heating issue, as, as, uh, anyway, as um, Shirley mentioned. So now the engineers have a license to go ahead and work on 6G and 7G. Whoa. <laughs> okay, next slide. So, as I said, the FCC rushed to announce approval in May of 2016 in order to be the first in the world. You've heard that before. But I think they know the deal is up. They know the gig is up. So, um, they were trying to really beat the National Toxicology Program rat study, which was announced also in May of 2016. And we didn't really go into that a lot, no, but... I, I skipped that. Okay, well, I'll be real quick. But, but, yes. The, the, um, F, uh, the FDA commissioned a report with the national, um, through the National Institute of Health, and they did a multi-year, $25 million study, taxpayer-funded, and they had uh, a couple hundred rats, and no, the rats didn't have cell phones strapped to their heads. Um, but they beamed the rats with, uh, I think it was 2G radiation, is that correct? 2, 2G? 2G? Fairly low level, um, full body radiation exposure. And uh, a significant number of, of male rats came down with schwannomas of the heart and gliomas of the brain. And it was a landmark study. And phase two comes out in 2018. They've already shown co that it cooperated, that it, um, you know, it, it kind of backed up phase one. But the peer review is ready, it's going to be ready uh, in 2018. Yeah. And, the, and there were zero cases in the control group rats, zero. That's the yeah, that's the key key point, really. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Next. So, scientists and physicians around the world right now, um, there's several hundred of them are appealing to the UN, the World Health Organization. It's crunch time for them because the ball is really it, it's way down the field, and um, I I don't know. I've had local elected officials say to me, we can't do anything, we're preempted, if the state takes over, and that's not true. That's not true. They have a voice. They can make that voice heard. They are our last line of defense. So we need to get out there and be vocal about this. This is, this is a serious issue. Next slide. Okay, if there's anything you can take away, 
it's that this is, um, it's just a, a serious triple threat, is what I call it. And we know that biological damage can occur at levels far lower than the lax FCC guidelines. But um, the 5G will bring an additional unprecedented layer of radio frequency radiation to, to all of us. It is a security issue in our country and a privacy issue. Uh, the Internet of Things will change the way we live. And uh, we don't know in what way they'll be using our information. But really, to me, the health issue, issue is the most important issue of all. And, you know, I have to say, the only redeeming part of this whole saga that we're all living through is having met such wonderful people, especially <laughs> Sherry and Diane. Um, when Smart Readers first came out, I got calls from people all over the state and people concerned, worried about their children, people who were sick, uh, almost immediately for some people. Um, electro hypersensitivity is a serious issue, and they say that it was about three to, I've heard three to five or three to seven percent of the population has it and doesn't know it. So uh, that's something to keep in mind, too. We, we will never know. I mean, the baseline is right now. Um, we don't know in what ways it's going to affect us. It's cumulative damage, and it's children. We all got to grow up without it growing, you know, as, as children. Uh, my grandchildren are growing up with it, and we don't know what the future brings. So I just urge each of you to learn as much as you can. Next slide, please. Just learn as much as you can. And don't assume that this is safe just because the FCC is wrong. <laughs> I think they got that. <laughs> yeah, I think, you, I think you got it. Yeah, I mean, I think, yes. I was just going to say, I, I was intrigued by this subject a long time ago. I was able to sweet talk the Electric Power Research Institute into sending me their documents on the effects of power lines on birds, plants, and small mammals. I... I I socially engineered it. I said, oh, I, can, I, wanna help. I want you to help me explain to all these damn environmentalists what the problem is. The guy actually sent me their data. And one, among the things it showed, and I'll just do three of them. Number one, for small mammals, it raises the adrenaline corticosterone level. They concluded from that, there's no problem. It's just a, a, adrenaline and corticosterone. And I said, isn't there a behavioral component? And he said, oh, well, yeah, they eat their young and fight a lot. Well, okay, that sounds like an impact to me. Birds, well, there's no impact. It just makes the shells thinner. Well, okay, what do you end up with? A lot of cracked shells and babies sat on. And then with plants around the growing edge, the growing edge is t tends to be killed. So 10 years later, after I turned in my paper in college, I'm working with the city of Miami Beach. Miami Beach Police Department captain comes up to me and said, well, 10 years ago, when you were back in college, you did this paper on the Electric Power Institute and the effects of their power lines. We're currently suing the city because our police officers, the women are wearing the belt and their they're walkie-talkies on their belt. Their antenna tends to hit their breasts. We've got five out of six women with breast cancer. Can you lend us your information? And I said, as long as you give it back. I said, listen, I'll bring it here. And he said, no, no. No, God, don't bring it here. Don't meet me in the city. Meet me at Dayland Mall, 50 miles away. That's where I'll come and meet you and pick the paperwork up. And I'm thinking, number one, how did he know that I turned a paper in 10 years ago? A paper, not an internet report, a paper. And then secondarily, what's the police captain afraid of that he doesn't want me to bring this data there? So if anyone's interested in that information, I can make it available. Uh, they did win their suit. And they won their suit. Yeah, I drove by that police station that sounds like a Tom Hanks movie to me. You know, like, <laughs> you know when the cops are afraid of information, that's uh, interesting. What I'd like to do now is to open it up for questions, but I did want to add a couple of things. Um, we've covered a lot of ground. We need to... My mother's telling me to stand up. <laughs> um, um, as you can see in Florida, we're behind. There, there has been a lot of activist groups um, we've gotten the message out somewhat. Chris Sadowski, the uh, county commissioner, has been very receptive. He gets it. Yes, he gets, and he gets it. everything. Yeah. Yes, and he, he actually had, we had some hearings in the county commissioner a few years ago. Former Senator Nan Rich, also, she was the one that set up those meetings up in Tallahassee. 
after I contacted her at the Democratic Women's Club in Stewart two or three times, and she was right there with it. So we know that there's some people, but there is so much work to do. We do need to spread the word. But the other thing I want to I want to finish with is a very personal personal note. I won't be able to handle 5G down my throat. My my symptoms are too bad. Um, I pick up other people's the Wi-Fi hotspots. You know, when you get those the Xfinity Wi-Fi, that stuff's coming in my house, and it affects my sleep. And I'm secondhand. Um, yes, it's secondhand. It's like I have RFR trespass. Those 5G, those 5G things are, are very powerful and they're going to just come right into the house. The only way to, to do that is to have a complete um, Faraday, cage. Faraday cage, which is all metal. And I, the environmental consultant I used years ago, he's building one for one of his clients because of the amount of radiation. Um, it's a very personal thing to me. I have not talked a lot about it and I, I thought it's time now for us to really bring it out of the closet. Shirley has been just a super woman here, getting out and teaching and talking about it. Stephanie's been a lifesaver, and, and Diane is one of the early adopters. She got it, too, right away. So, Gail, we appreciate your offer, because we do I need would, to start getting the message out. I will need help, but I would love to do that. Yes, yes, and I'm sure. I mean, I, need, I don't need help with the page. I need help with the resource. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So we'll, we'll open it up for questions now. Carol? Since those people were damaged in Cuba mentally, <laughs> and it's a mystery, and they can't figure out what was done to them. So yes, that's definitely <laughs> microwaves or could be maximum wave. Yes, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. That's 